We're going to start with the 111. Everybody say 111. And then we will do, after one you find, wah, two, 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 then three, 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 four, 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 five, 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 six, 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 and finally the jackpot without gambling, seven, seven, seven. Let it be so. There we go. First one, I want you to write down, believe and follow. Believe and follow. My brother, faith. Faith. We are saved because we believe. For everyone who believes, they will be saved. What is faith? Faith will overcome the world. That's 1 John 5. You have that? 1 John 5, you overcome the world. You are saved through faith. And God is pleased by faith. Amen. So where is the 111? We find it where? Come on. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Come on. You need to go, be with me, eh? Faith is the substance. The substance is what? The substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Hebrews 1, 1, 1, 11 verse 1. You need to remember that in Jesus' name. I want you to remember a few principles, just these seven ones. Um, please, as you go out here, you will remember that in Jesus' name, I say by faith. Hebrews 11 verse 1. It's all about you can only enter, you can only become a child for those who believe. They will be saved. You will only overcome the world, 1 John 5. Is it not the one that believes that will overcome the world? It's your faith that overcome the world. How is God pleased? Hebrews 11 verse 6. God is pleased by faith. So unto the Lord he's pleased by faith. I am saved by faith. Against the world I will overcome through faith. And the righteous will walk by faith. Amen. Faith, the foundation. Second point, follow. Everybody say follow. So I will believe and I will follow. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1. 1, 1, 1. There we go. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. So first of all, yes. You believe, you are saved. Yes. But through faith, you overcome the world. Through faith, you please God. You walk by faith. But then in all of that, follow Christ. Believe and follow. Not follow your good ideas. Not follow religion. Not follow the right thing to do. But follow the person, the one that you believe in. The one that is inside. Hello. Follow Christ. But follow Christ in such a way that you can tell people, follow me as I follow Christ. Follow my example. Everybody say, by faith, follow my example. As I follow the example of Christ. So the challenge is, can you say with boldness that if people will follow you, it will be as if following Christ. When people follow you, it will be as if they are following Christ. That's your challenge. That's my challenge. Amen? You take it. That's Corinthians 11 verse 1. Everybody in the children of the church say, believe and follow. Believe and follow. Amen. And I say. Second point. 2 Samuel. 2-2-2. Two, two, two. 22 verse 2. 2 Samuel 22 verse 2. The two words that I want you to give you, know and obey. The first one is believe and follow. Second one is know and obey. When you know your God, you can obey him. If you don't know who he is, you don't know what to obey. If I don't know who God is, how can I obey him? Then you obey some other idea in the religion. Some other law that you think is supposed to be good. You can only obey the one that you know. If you know your opinion, when you know what you want to do in your life, you'll obey that. 
If you know a certain vision, you'll obey that. Hello? 2 Samuel 22 verse 2. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. The Lord is my rock. What does that mean? I will build my house on the rock. I will build my house on the revelation of who he is. So you need to know who he is. Then you have the rock underneath you. If you don't know who he is, you have, you're building on sand. You have no life that you are building. Whatever you build is for destruction. Whatever you build is so that it, at the end of the day it will destroy something or, or someone. Built on the revelation of who he is. The Lord is my shepherd. I built on that foundation. What does that mean? I have provision. I built on the revelation of who he is. If he is shepherd, I have provision. If he is the light of the world, I have perspective. If he is the way, I have breakthrough. I have it already because he is and he is the one in me. Amen? Are you with me? No, oh, come on. If you know your God, so many things can happen. Second point. He's my rock. He's my fortress. I am safe. In him, I'm safe. If I know my God, I'm safe. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'm your father. What is the father doing? What is the shepherd doing? Hello? He's protecting the sheep. If you know who he is, hello? Then you can obey. Fortress. And the last one is the, the deliverer. Whatever can come against you, he will set you free. He will deliver you. He will fight. The battle belongs to the Lord. He's the deliverer. Because he said he's the deliverer, he will do the fighting. If I can believe who he is, then I can obey him. If he's the deliverer and he says to you, go this way, and then you better go that way. Then you better go that way. I was always catching a lift on a, uh, when I worked in uh, Pretoria at the municipality. Can you believe it? And uh, to pay off the medical bursary, and I got a lift from city center, then out there to Sarfontein, what's that word? So, by the kant, yeah, outside of the Pretoria. And this guy would go with a bike like this through all the traffic. I was praying in tongues, I'm telling you, very loud. <laughs> Sitting at the back, just going with. And at one stage, we, we went in the, on, on a highway, uh, highway, and I spoke to him that we will go this side and go and see the house where a lot of rubbish happened. Let's just say, just to drive past that house. And we drove past that house uh, very quickly. It, it, took, it was like one minute going, <laughs> and then back on the road, you know. And as we went over the hill, the pieces still was falling off two buses, uh, one taxi, uh, big truck, and two or three cars in a crash. <laughs> sometimes God will ask you to obey, and sometimes you don't even know. And it would be just in a natural way. But you, you don't even know it's God guiding you. God says, pray in tongues, pray in tongues. The next day, that same guy, he said, Eve. normally when you go on the gravel road and you hit the sand bank on the side, he had quite a few accidents, that guy. He got a kick out of that, I don't know what. He said, and he went too fast and he went against the sand bank and normally he would just curse and say whatever. He says, but I said, Jesus, help me. <laughs> He laughed and he said, I said, Jesus, help me. And the next moment, the car was just like that. He says, it's actually impossible, but that's what happened. And when I figured out when it was, it was that moment. Sometimes you will just feel you must pray now. Sometimes just you need to pray in tongues, but you don't know. 
that you are interceding for a situation. Are you with me? But come to know your God and then obey him. And then obey him. As you know him, you will obey him. Are you with me? 2 Samuel 22 verse 2. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. Genesis 22 verse 2. God spoke to Abram. Take your son, your only son, whom you love. Don't take all the rubbish out of your life. No, take the one that you love. And sacrifice him as a burnt offering. As a burnt offering on the mountain. I don't want to look at, find the picture in my mind of what, how I will see what I will do with my son. And then when I go up the mountain, I tell the, the, the servants, I'm going up the mountain to worship. To call that worship. But he knew he's God because he knew that even God has the ability to raise my son from the dead. And even if God must do that and raise my son from the dead, he are able, he's able to do that. But because he knew he's God, he had the faith to obey. When you know your God, you will be able to obey. You will have the capacity to obey. Let's say, I will have the capacity to obey. If I know my God, let it be so in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Genesis 22 verse 2. So everybody once again, the 111, first of all, is faith and that is where? Hebrews, Hebrews 11 verse 1. By faith you are saved. By faith you overcome the world. God is pleased by faith. The righteous will walk by faith. The other 111, you need to follow him. Follow me as I follow Christ. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1. Then the 2 to 2, it was 2 Samuel 22 verse 2 that says, Anybody? Come on. My rock, my fortress, my deliverer. Amen? Know your God, know him and obey him. Obey him. We find that in Genesis 22 verse 2. God said to Abram, everything, everything. And many times God, because he's a jealous God and he wants your whole heart, he, he wants you to obey him so that he can draw you closer, closer, closer. He wants to arrest you with his love and say, if you love me, you will obey me. If you love me, you will obey me. You will show your love for me in a practical way in how you respond with your lifestyle. You will show your love to me in a practical way with responding to me through a concept that will be called obedience. Obedience. Obedience as a concept of a response because of my love for my God. Are you with me? Ah, somebody, are you with me? Okay, the revelation after... Two, 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 we find? Three, three, three. Ah, oh, come on. Nice word. <laughs> Anybody knows uh, the three, three, three from uh, Children's Church? Tring, tring, tring. Ne? The Lord's telephone number. Call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and marvelous things. Okay. What are we saying? Call him. And the other one who word I said, yeah, was well, sing with quality. Sing with quality to the Lord. Call, call him and sing unto him. Everybody say, call and sing. That's the two words. First one, call unto me and I will answer you and show you. What? Call unto me and I will give you all the answers. Call unto me and I will give you all the breakthroughs. Call when you have a, a need, when you have something that you need to understand. Uh, call if I must explain something to you. Too many times our prayers are fixed around those, those things. But call unto me and I will show you. Axel, you on your grond like a vice. Things that you never thought of I want to show you. What? I want to have a conversation with you. Call unto me and we will have an excellent conversation and I will show you things that you didn't ask to know. 
These are things that you didn't ask me that you would want to know. But I want to speak to you. I want to commune with you. I want to have this fellowship with you. But call unto me. Are you with me? Hello? Hello? Then the other 333, three, three. we'll know that one. The other 333, three, three. give me another 333 three. for sing. Sing. Ranzel, he was here. Psalm 33, verse 3. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Play skillfully. Play skillfully. Are you with me? Okay, sing unto the Lord a new song. What's that all about? You know when you pray and somebody always just pray, uh, uh, recite a prayer. And somewhere we are saying there's not a deep relationship. There's not really a deep relationship with God you, if you must recite a prayer. If you have a relationship with somebody and you are just reciting the same words every day, you will think something is wrong here. Something is wrong here, but there's definitely not a relationship. So, when we sing, yes, our heart is in what we sing, but somewhere there's supposed to be more creativity, like singing a new song. Now that is like when you pray and you say, God, you are great. There's none like you. I, I follow you and I choose to follow you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. Now just put that prayer with a melody. Don't have to be a perfect melody. Go and practice there alone. Lord, I love you. And then I did. And you just sing whatever comes up. But let it be a new song. God wants creativity. He, he wants a freshness in your relationship with him. Amen. He wants us to, you to have a song in your heart. A song. And what is the unique song that you are creating in your heart? A unique, fresh, creative song in your heart. But then you do it with excellence. Play skillfully. Do it with excellence. So be creative. Be fresh. Let there be freshness. Let there be uniqueness in your relationship with God, but let there also be excellence. Let's say freshness, uniqueness, creativity, with a song in my heart, but also excellence. Let that be so. Three, three, three. You with me? Okay, number one was what? Believe and follow. Number two? I will know him and I will obey him. Number three, I will call unto him and I. And there will be excellence in what I will do, in my singing, in how I will present myself unto the Lord. Creativity will flow. That's three, three, three. Number four, four, four. I give you two words. See God's beauty and receive his promises. Kom nie, kun jy moet nie skryf. Sê Gods oor. Wat is dit? Wat skryf sy nie? Sê Gods beauty and receive his promises. So we find it in Ezekiel. Ezekiel 44 verse 4. I looked and saw. You can look at a lot of things without seeing anything. They looked and they saw Jesus. They saw that he's doing a lot of miracles. They saw the power of God. They saw a lot of things happening. But they, they looked at it, but they saw nothing. You can even look at people around here. You can look at the Bible. You can look and you can read. But you can see nothing in the Word of God. You can see nothing in what, in what I'm saying. You can see nothing in that song that's being sung. I looked and I saw the glory. I saw the glory. That's the beauty and the splendor of the Lord. Filling the temple of the Lord. And I fell face down. And I fell face down. Because I could see how God is filling the temple with his beauty, with his splendor, with his glory. And so today, my brother, my sister... Can you see God filling you with beauty? As you walk with him, or can you, 
can you see all the mistakes? Yes, and we can remind one another just about mistakes and all those things and see one another in the flesh. But if, it, if it's possible for me to see the beauty, how God is filling the temple, filling the temple, filling the temple with his beauty. God, open my eyes so that I can see how you are filling your temple with beauty. Ezekiel 44 verse 4. See his beauty. See his splendor. Amen. That's part of life, man. That's part of life. And the promises, we find that in Isaiah 44. So Ezekiel 44 verse 4 and then Isaiah 44. Verse 4, and they, that's the children, your children, and they will spring up among the grass like poplars trees, this Wilgerboom, wilder trees. What's a Wilgerboom? Willow. Willow trees. God say, man. And they, the children, will spring up among the grass. You will just see grass and just suddenly your children are just coming forth. They are just coming forth, coming forth. Out from the grass, there is this tree. And where? By streams of water. Symbolically, even Psalm 1, the living water. There where the guidance of the Spirit will be. Fresh water. There, at that place where the guidance of the Spirit, the flow of the Spirit will be there. The flow of guidance for your children. Or there, with your children, there will be breakthroughs. Why? Because there will be freshness. They will draw from the well. More than the well. They will draw from the river. The flow of the Spirit. Yeah, somebody must say amen if they're going to have children or have to rule. children. Amen? amen? Take that promise. Speak it. Speak it forth over your children. Okay? They will come forth like those trees. And they will be planted there at the streams of living water. And they will draw from the Holy Spirit. They will be filled with freshness. So it will be for my children in Jesus' name, I proclaim. Take that promises. That's Isaiah 44 and Ezekiel 44. Okay, number five. You will give people a high five. People come to God, in, to the God in you. So when you give somebody a high five, it is about Christ in me. You are coming to Christ in me. Yes. Come and you will see God in me. Man, I mean the children church. Is it not really all right, Grant? Okay, donkey. Good. The high five is Christ can be seen in me and nations will come to me. Where do we find that? I think you know. Isaiah 55 verse 5. 5, 5, 5. Isaiah 55, verse 5. You shall call nations you do not know. And nations that do not know you will run to you. They will run to you because of the Lord your God. For he has endowed you with splendor. That is his beauty. Nations that you will call, they will come. And people that you don't know, they will run to you. Why? Why? Because there's answers inside of you. Because you have a wisdom. When you open your mouth, there's wisdom. Because there's answers that's alive in you. And that's the answers that's coming from heaven. Are you with me? Are you with me? Hello? They will run to you because of the Lord your God. Because of Him. Because of Him. He's living inside of you because of the answers that you can provide. When they find no answers there outside, they will run to you for answers because you have it. They will run to you for wisdom. They will run to you for hope because Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's all about Him. They will run to the God in you because when the God in you is speaking, they know there's answers. He has a wisdom beyond Himself. That's how the Pharisees look. Looked at the fishermen. He said, hey, they are just fishermen, man. Where do they get this wisdom? Where does this wisdom come from? They didn't study the scriptures, but they have this wisdom inside of them. And they were amazed at the wisdom. So the world must be amazed at you and run to you for answers because of your wisdom. 
Let's say they will run to me because the wisdom of God and the answers from heaven, that's inside of me. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please. Let's see that. Because of the Lord your God, for he has endowed you, endowed you with splendor, his beauty. God is making your life beautiful. And because of the beauty from heaven, because of the beauty in you, the splendor of God that's in you, they will be drawn. They will be drawn. They will be drawn to you. Let it be so. But for that, I need to understand. I need to believe and follow him. I need to know him and obey him. I need to call unto him and commune with him, have fellowship with him, and sing with quality from my heart and creativity, with freshness from my heart. I need to see God's beauty and how he's filling me with beauty. And I need to receive and take the promises of God. Amen? So that from that place, number five, 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 five. Isaiah 555, yeah. Amen, at least I get a response somewhere. <laughs> Hallelujah. Make my day. People can come to the God that's in you. Christ is the answer for everything. Not true? Uh, hello? So then let, let Christ be seen, and then answers will be seen through your life. Number six. Oh, now we are at the man. 666. The 666. You've heard about 666? Somewhere in the Bible, maybe. That's when the devil and all the huaras and mamamparas and things going to happen. Now, there's a new definition of 666 that I can give you. Isaiah 66, the last chapter, verse 6. A voice of uproar. Other translations, a noise from the city. Everybody say, there's a noise from the city. My brother, my sister, there will be chaos. There will be a noise. It will be just a lot of noise that you cannot distinguish. You cannot understand what's happening. But it's chaos. It's just noise, 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 noise. There will be a noise from the city. But then the scripture says, and a voice from the temple. There will be a voice from the temple. More and more in the end time, there will be a voice from the church. In the midst of the noise and the noises out there, even in this season with COVID. And there's a lot of noises, but there needs to be a voice from the temple. Anybody for an amen? amen. Better be a voice from you as a temple. There must be a voice from the church in the midst of the noises in the cities, in the nations. May God help you there at the school, there where you are working, there at your workplace, where you are at. And that you will not just bring before the Lord, Lord, where this is happening and that is happening and that is happening. You don't bring, have to bring all the noises in your prayer. But be that voice in how you come with clarity. And the last one in that, Isaiah 66, 6, there will be a voice from the temple and the voice of the Lord. And there will be the voice of the Lord. There will be a voice in the temple. There will be a noise in the city. But there will be the voice of the Lord. And he said, of the Lord who's rendering recompense, recompense to his enemies. Bottom line, who is dealing with the enemy. You think of 666? First of all, yes, there's, a, I can say, a hell of a noise out there in the world. Secondly, there will be a voice from the church. And thirdly, there will be the voice of God because God is dealing with the enemy. Hello, Isaiah 66 verse 6. We are at the number 666. First of all, let's say, a noise from the nations. 
a voice in the church. And the, and the voice of God dealing with the enemy. I like this. I like this. I like this very much. And then the last one, the only 666 that you will find still in the Bible will be there. Uh, you call it Psalms. Psalm 66, verse 6. Interesting. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the waters. That was in the other translations talking about the river on foot. And they will let us then come and rejoice in him. That's the scripture. What are we talking about? We're talking about breakthrough upon breakthrough upon breakthrough. Everybody say breakthrough upon breakthrough. Let it be so. He turned the sea into dry land. We, we talked about this. At your dead end, there's your breakthrough. I don't know if some of you could remember. When they came to their dead end, here's Israel, they are set free, and here they come, and the enemy is coming, and what do they see in front of them? A dead end, the Red Sea. They can go nowhere. In this season, people, they lost their jobs. They, they are in debt, or they have no finance, they have no breakthroughs in a lot of stuff, a lot of things. At that dead end, God wants to show himself. God wants to brag about himself what he can do when you are at your dead end. God is waiting for that dead end so that he can open up the sea. Hello. He cannot open a sea if you're not at a dead end. So by his grace, by his splendor, by just the fact of who he is, when you're coming at a place where there's a dead end, and you see the enemy and the circumstance and the rubbish coming closer and closer, the, the things that are going to destroy you, they are coming closer. Just know, at that place, God's going to show himself. He's going to give you a breakthrough. That's it. Out of the rubbish, into the place. Oh, I ha we have the breakthrough so that we can come where? Into Canaan. No, into the desert. <laughs> I thought we have a breakthrough. I gave myself to the Lord. I'm set free from all the rubbish and all the things that wanted to come against me. I'm set free. I'm having my breakthrough. I'm in the desert. Okay. But your breakthrough to go into destiny is how you deal with yourself in the desert. Let's say I need to deal with myself in the desert. So that I can go for destiny. Deal with yourself in the desert so that you can go for de destiny. Amen. But of course, when they didn't deal with themselves, with their issues of the past, with their issues where you just wanted to receive, with their issues of moaning and groaning. People that are negative and they're moaning and they're groaning and, and there's always something. They cannot deal with themselves. In the desert. They cannot enter the Canaan. They can create their own Canaan. Whatever the enemy can give them. But they will not go into the destiny that God has for them. Because they cannot stop the negativity. The focus on themselves. The, the circumstances. What is happening or what is not happening. And with all the moaning and the groaning. God says, you test me. And God said, you will not enter. Not the devil said it. God said, you will not enter. God cannot open it up for you. Because in Canaan, he will be honored. And he wants to have the glory. He wants to be honored in Canaan. When he is bringing down Jericho, when he's bringing down the nations, he wants to be honored. Amen? Are you with me? 666. Six, six. Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. So that at the end of the day, come, let us rejoice in our breakthroughs. No, let us rejoice in Him. He is our breakthrough. And doesn't matter the, the, the excellence of my breakthroughs, of my answers, of my victories, of my Canaan that I in, inherited, Canaan, my, in, that what God has for me. Yes, I must be excited about that, but the essence of my joy is in Him. So, more into even the end time, more and more when the deception is there. You better make sure 
that you rejoice in the Lord. There's no moaning and groaning more and more into the time of trouble, into times of a lot of challenges that's coming on the nations of the earth. You will be protected, protected by rejoicing in Him. Not rejoicing, first of all, just in a breakthrough. In a breakthrough. That scripture says, went through the sea, went through the waters, on dry land, and therefore let us rejoice in Him. In Him. Make sure you understand these principles, please. Make sure you understand these principles. There will be a hell of a noise in your head. Noises, noises, noises of your flesh, noises of issues, noises of whatever that's coming from the world. And the facts, there will be a lot of intimidating facts that can justify the noises in you. But you better rise up so that there will be a voice in you. A voice coming from the word, a voice coming from the integrity of your heart, a voice coming from the character of Christ that is alive in you. There's a voice in you. And it better be known there where you work, where you move, where you are. The voice of the church must be out there. Why? Because of the voice of God that's dealing with his enemies. That's dealing with the enemy. That was 666. Are you with me? Now let's go for the jackpot. <laughs> Psalm 77 verse 7. That's the only one that you can find. There's a lot of questions. Now maybe I must just read this. Psalm 77. Okay. 77. Now verse 6 says, I remembered my songs in the night. My heart meditated and my spirit asked. And then there's five. My spirit asked. And then there's five verses. Will the Lord do this? Has, in fail, his, has his unfailing love vanished? Has he promised this and this and this? Has God forgotten this and this? Has he in anger did this and this and this? Then I thought, to this I will appeal. The years when the Most High stretch out his right hand. What will I do? I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on your mighty deeds. I have a lot of questions in me, the writer says. There's a lot of questions in me. But in the midst of all that, those questions, guys, and you will have questions, and the church will have questions, and the nations will go into major, major, major confusion. And that's why their platform form for, for deception, one of the biggest signs in the end time, will be there. Deception will have an authority. It will have a voice. It will have a voice in the nations. Deception. Because the questions will just become more and more and more and more and more. And even in the church, why can God allow this? Why does God do, why, why is this happening? Why is that happening? But in the midst of all those questions, you will find before those questions, Psalm 77, 7, I remembered my song in the night my heart meditated, my spirit asked. Let's say, there's a song in my heart. Let's say that. There's a song in my heart. And in the midst of all your questions, my brother, my sister, you will keep the song in your heart. You will remember. You will remember what God has done. You will remember the song in your heart. And secondly, you will meditate with your heart meditate on something is i arrest my focus i arrest my heart to think upon these things i can meditate on my hurt i can meditate on this my disappointments i can meditate on all my weaknesses i can meditate on my offense against people 
I can meditate on that, and my heart will become hardened. My heart will be arrested by bitterness because I meditate on those things. How? Because I think upon those things the whole time. I will think about, on my, about my circumstances, and then you are meditating on your circumstances so that you will be captured by your circumstances because you meditate on it. But if you meditate on the Word of God with your whole heart, your heart will be safe. Your heart will be captured by the Word of God. I will meditate with my heart. Let's say that. I will meditate with my heart. The question is on what? On the Word of God. You better get into the Word. You better get into the Word. You better get into His love and who He is. So that that word, that truth, can arrest you and keep you safe. And keep your heart safe. But if you focus on other things and you think upon that, that means you meditate on the wrong things. And your heart, and your heart, it will just be a lot of filthy rubbish coming out from your heart. And your heart will be hardened according to the facts that you meditate on, instead of according to the truth coming from his heart. We are talking about this is the final. The final of the final is what do you do with your heart? How will you meditate? How will you focus on him in the midst of the noises and the rubbish and the deception and whatever intimidation is out there? How do you meditate, hello, on him? Because also you choose to remember the song. You choose to remember the joy. You choose to remember what the Lord has done. And so that, from that place, your spirit can be strong. And your spirit is sensitive. Your spirit can distinguish. That sounds good, but this is not God. And there will be just this excellence, this accurate guidance from your spirit. And you will know the guidance. You will know where to be, where not to be. Where to go, where not to go. Because your spirit is awake. Because your spirit is awake. Thoroughly, accurately investigate. And my spirit will search diligently. I will meditate with my heart and my spirit will search diligently. Other translations, thoroughly Accurately investigate. And not investigate this and investigate that what is happening out in the world. Because so easily you'll be deceived. Just like that. Because there will be very a lot of professional voices. Professional voices out there. Is it a mate, mate? You're with me? May God set you free. Okay. Children. In the church, what was number one? One, one, one. Believe and follow. Believe because faith, by faith I'm saved. Through faith I overcome the world. God is pleased by faith and I will walk by faith. And from that place, I will follow him in such a way that we, if we say, people, follow me. And if you follow me, it will be as if you are following Christ. Follow. That's 1 Corinthians 1, 1, 1 and Hebrews 1, 1, 1. Second point was? Okay, anybody you can speak? Know and obey. Know your God and you can only obey Him if you know Him. Otherwise you will obey some demon of religion or some nice thoughts. Know and obey. 2 Samuel 22 verse 2 and Genesis 22 verse 2. Okay. Number 3. Tring, tring. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and marvelous things. Call unto me. Come. Call me. And I want to have a conversation. I want to have fellowship. I want to merely say drink tea with you. No. I want to be with you. I will hear us with yourselves. That was lekker kan gesels. And I want to show you a lot of things that you didn't even ask me to know. Okay? 333 and the other 333 was 
Psalm 33, verse 3, that the song in your heart you will sing with excellence but with creativity. Freshness in your song with creativity. Number four, four. Four. Four, four, four. Ezekiel. Ezekiel, four, four, four. Anybody? Huh? Four, four, four. It will come forth. It will come forth. Four, four, four. Okay, Ezekiel, four, four, four. God will fill the temple with his glory. God will fill this temple, that temple, with his beauty, his splendor. I need to see the beauty of God. In this season, more than ever before, I need to see the beauty. I can see all the rubbish. But by fact, you will see nonsense in people. You will see nonsense and rubbish in yourself. But you need to come to the place to see his hand and what the beautiful, beautiful things that he's doing in you. Amen? And Isaiah 44 verse 4, that says... All that beauty in you, all that beauty through you, beauty in other people, God's filling you. And in the light of that, just know that your children will blossom. They will come forth. Hello? At the place where? Where streams of water, where there's freshness from God, where the guidance of the Spirit will be there. That's where your children will be. You better take that promise. High five. Five, five, verse five. Isaiah. 35 is 5. What will happen if, this, if you are this type of person? What will happen? Nations will come to you. You will call nations and nations that you don't know. They will come to you. They will run to you because answers are in you. Wisdom are coming forth from you. Because God made your life beautiful. He has filled you with wisdom. He has filled you with answers. Because he is the answer that's alive in you. Amen. 666. Six, six, six. We find it in Isaiah 66, verse 6. First of all, there's a hell of a noise out there in the city. A lot of noises in the, in the nations. A noise, but secondly, there's a voice in you. There's a voice in the church. And by grace, in the name of Christ, you will rise up and I will rise up. And the church will rise up in the nations that in every nation, the voice of the church will be heard. Amen. And there's a voice in the temple because there's the voice of God that's dealing with his enemies. That's dealing with his enemies. Amen? Amen. That's your 666. And the second one of 666, Psalm 66, verse 6, says breakthroughs upon breakthroughs. At your dead end, Red Sea, breakthrough on dry land you go through. At the River Jordan, there's a breakthrough. But when you have the breakthrough and you end up in the desert, don't think you have no breakthrough. Deal with yourself in the desert so that you can have the next breakthrough into destiny about the fullness of his blessing that he has for you because you dealt with the rubbish in your own life. Amen. And then at the end of your breakthrough, you rejoice about what? About the breakthrough? Yes. But about... Him in your breakthrough. About Christ, the breakthrough. And lastly, 777. A lot of questions out there. A lot of questions. Questioning God. Questioning His faithfulness. Questioning His love. Questioning His integrity. Questioning a lot of things. But you say, I will decide. I will think upon the following. This is what I will remember. I will remember my song. I will remember what God has done. I will remember the excitement that I have for God. I will be thankful for what he has done in my life. This is what I will remember. And secondly, I will meditate with my heart on the truth. I will not meditate on what people did wrong to, to me. I will not meditate so that my heart become hard and bitterness and full of rubbish. No. I will meditate on the word so that the freedom from my heart will come forth. And lastly, my spirit will be sensitive. I can thoroughly accurately distinguish what is from him and what is not. So I will not be deceived for the coming and in the coming of my Lord Jesus Christ. God, come and do this in us, Lord, please.
please, Lord, come and do this in us. Come and do this through us. I pray for every man, every woman here that they will experience that. Not the sensitivity and the accuracy of their depression or their negativity or whatever they're going through. But God, set us free, all of us, Lord. Set us free, please, my Lord, so that we can go through and seeing, even with the 666, ah, Lord, that we will see beyond the noises the voice that you've put in us because of your voice that's dealing with our enemies. The battle belongs to the Lord. God, we give you all the honor for what you have done and what you're going to do. We thank you for that. We honor you for that, Father, in Jesus' name and in that name alone. And everyone say, Amen. Amen.